I am a firm believer in the idea that there is no good Halloween music, barring anything that came out of Nightmare Before Christmas. If you play the Monster Mash for me, I'm gonna beat you to death with a shovel. <laughs> However, there's plenty of good music that works well for Halloween. So on today's Halloween episode of Mike's Hard Reviews, I am going to make for you a drink I call a little piece of heaven. Hey there, hello there, my name is Michael, welcome back to Mike's Hard Reviews. It's Halloween, and just like the last episode, I'm still sick. But the good news is that this is a cocktail that does technically have some roots in old world medicine and um, invigorate me a little bit. <laughs> uh, like I was saying, I think that there's no good Halloween music, but there's plenty of examples of music that works well around Halloween time. The one that comes to mind for me is from a band called Avenged Sevenfold, who was a metal band uh, that started around the late 90s, early 2000s, and their self-named album, I think uh, 2007, I think, um, uh, Avenged Sevenfold, has a song on it called A Little Piece of Heaven. This song is disturbing as all fuck, but it's also super tongue-in-cheek and very Halloween-y in that way. In, in essence, the song is built on three verses. The first verse is, uh, boyfriend murders girlfriend, preserves her body, and engages in necrophilia. Second, stay with me, stay with me. Second verse is, the girl comes back from the dead, murders him, sends him to hell, and makes him atone for his sins. Third verse is, they get back together and then go on a murder spree so they can have a zombie wedding. Come on, that is so Halloween. <laughs> uh, I think it's a really, you know, fun, silly, stupid song uh, to listen to around uh, Halloween time. I think the song's really fun, and I think that it makes a great basis for a cocktail called A Little Piece of Heaven that I'm going to make for you right now. This is going to be another shaken cocktail, so grab your cocktail shaker. And we're going to start by pouring in one ounce of a coconut syrup. In all fairness, you could use cream of coconut here, like Coco Lopez, and in fact, I think that would actually be more advisable because Coco Lopez has a creaminess to it that'll help I don't know, kind of build up the body of the cocktail a little differently. However, this Monin coconut syrup is actually quite realistic in its coconut flavor. It doesn't taste like tanning lotion, so if you did have to use something that was not cream of coconut, go for Monin coconut. We'll start with one ounce of that. And next up, we need some citrus. In this particular case, we're gonna go ahead and reach for some freshly squeezed lime juice. We'll come behind our coconut syrup with one ounce of lime juice. Next up is, I think, the most fun part of this, uh, this cocktail. Uh, it is a one ounce pour of Angostura bitters. What I was saying earlier about this potentially leaning into old world medicine, bitters used to be considered medicinal. So um, this kind of spicy, bitter, high proof spirit additive will uh, maybe waking me up and uh, bring me back from the dead. One ounce of Angostura bitters. And finally, we need a Jamaican rum, uh, one ounce. Nothing too funky, uh, something, you know, approachable. I'm gonna go for uh, Appleton Estate Signature. The point is though, you definitely want something aged because uh, that little bit of oaky vanilla in this is gonna be uh, quite helpful here. That's all of our ingredients. Let's go ahead and add some ice. We're gonna do, as always, one cube whole and the second cube cracked. We will cap that up, tap that down, and shake for 10 to 12 seconds to combine. This cocktail is intended to be served up in some stemware. We'll go ahead and uncap that and pour that on in. Check out this color, guys. <laughs> it looks like blood, people. It's Halloween. Now to garnish this, we're gonna do two different things. I'm gonna grab a nice lime here, something with a really good outer peel, and I'm gonna take a swath of lime peel. We're gonna go ahead and express that over the top of the drink, like so. And then I'm gonna crack open this fresh container of Luxardo cherries. There's a point in the song where, in the first verse, um, the boyfriend, when he murders the girlfriend, uh, rips her heart out, and if I'm not mistaken, eats it whole along with her eyes over easy. I'm not making the shit up. So we're gonna use a uh, maraschino cherry as a garnish to hearken to that lyric, assuming I can get it out of the goddamn jar. We'll make a little flag out of this by wrapping our lime peel around that cherry, and then resting that on the rim of our glass. And that, ladies and gentlemen, 
is a little piece of heaven. Okay, so we've got our station more or less cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and give our cocktail here a sip. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm, <laughs> yes. So this is a cocktail that has a stunning amount of evolution. It obviously opens up with the impact of that lime oil we've spritzed across the top of the cocktail, kind of giving it this nice acidity and this very gentle bitterness that is followed very quickly by that coconutty sweetness that almost immediately warms and blows up into the baking spices in the Angostura bitters, and it gets you with this really palpable middle, you know, back of the tongue, back of the middle palate bitterness. It just mm, warms you up. It's got all these, this complexity to it. Behind that comes this oaky, vanilla, lightly sweet, very, very much characterful Jamaican rum that comes in and kind of cuts and pulls that bitterness back. And oh man, is it good. <laughs> the kind of the coconut sweetness comes back again at the end. It sort of kind of pilots everything through. The lime is keeping things, you know, acidic and is playing off of the bitters and the rum particularly well to sort of balance everything and keep it from being kind of thick or, or overly coconut. Coconut is such a strong flavor no matter where you use it. Um, so it's, it's hard to balance, but here I think it's doing a really good job being moderative. It's definitely a challenging drink, but as far as Halloween drinks go, it's good. And I mean, it looks like blood. Come on, you can't really get better than that. <laughs> well, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. I'm going to um, forego reading from Chris Post today because I have to edit this video and the video that preceded it uh, and I'm sick, so I wanna go do that and then lay down. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, click that like button down below and subscribe. I make a new episode every single Friday and uh, sometimes on Tuesdays like the one you're watching now because uh, it's Halloween. So um, thank you for watching. I will see you guys around. You can follow me on my socials, but otherwise just hang out with me here. Have a good rest of your day, drink responsibly, and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.